How's it going? I'm Andrew. Today I'd like to teach you how to find the removable discontinuity in the following function of x cubed plus 1 divided by x plus 1. So the first step we're going to have to do is to keep everything, or not keep everything, but fully factor everything in this equation. All right. So it turns out that we can factor the top, right? We have a cube there, so we can find the factors. They're a little tricky, but we can do it. And we'd also have to factor the bottom, but that's already in factored form, so we can kind of leave that alone. All right. Now to factor this top, we're going to use the difference of cubes formula. Okay. Now the difference of cubes formula has this general structure. If you have something that has a cubed minus b cubed, okay, you can fact you can find a factor and one factor at least in a quadratic equation that results. Uh, by simply uh, remembering this formula. It's going to be a minus b times then a squared plus ab uh, plus then b squared. Okay, that's the difference of cubes formula. So now we have one little complication, right, is that we have x cubed plus 1. So we got two little issues. We got definitely the x cubed. We can clearly see that the a is really the x, right? Uh, but we have a plus 1 here. But I can kind of turn this into a minus, right? I mean, I can do that. Yes, I could write a minus here, and I could put parentheses and write minus 1 and keep that cubed, right? And if I were to do this math on out, uh, negative 1 cubed is going to be a negative 1, and then multiplied by negative is going to be a positive, so that works out to be exactly what I have there. So this turns out that this is my x, or excuse me, that's my a, all right? And then I have my uh, b as being negative 1. Okay, so that's what I'm going to now plug into this formula. So I'm going to have a, which is x, and then b, which is a negative 1, so it's a minus then your b value, which is negative 1, times then your a squared, which is going to be x squared, plus then your a value, which is x, times then your b, which is a negative 1, plus then negative 1 squared. Okay, and we'll close that parenthesis over there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that up a little bit, okay? Let's move this down out of our way. So now I'm going to clean that up a little bit, all right? So this really, really works out to be x plus 1, okay? And then times, this should be x squared uh, minus x uh, plus 1, okay? All right, cool. And then divide that now by x plus 1. So I don't really need to keep factoring. The reason being is because I know I said fully factored form and all this stuff, but... Basically, as long as I can cancel something in the denominator, I know I'm pretty good, all right? Uh, reason being is because discontinuities, or meaning where a function is discontinuous, occurs when, at one, one instance, is when the denominator, if the denominator becomes zero, especially when you have a rational function here, you have to always be careful about the denominator values, all right, about x being in that denominator. You know that x cannot be negative 1 because if it's negative 1, well, when you add 1 to it, it becomes 0, and you cannot have a 0 in that denominator, all right? So if I could somehow cancel this factor, I would remove the discontinuity. Ooh, remove the discontinuity, and look what happens over here. That goes bye-bye with that, all right? So I removed that discontinuity, all right? I was able to remove the x plus 1 factor. In other words, I was able to remove the discontinuity at x being equal to negative 1, because that's really where it happens, right? As I mentioned before, x being negative 1, that produces a 0 result for that denominator. So what results here now is your overall function of x squared minus x plus 1. Now, to find the point at which this discontinuity, this removable discontinuity occurs, it becomes now a, a point uh, discontinuity. Uh, what you would do now is you would take your x value here and plug it back in, okay? So you'd have f of negative 1 being equal to negative 1 squared minus then a negative 1 plus 1. And this works out to be 1 plus 1 plus 1, and hopefully I don't make a mistake here. That's a 3, all right? That is a 3. So the point at which this removable discontinuity or this point discontinuity now exists is going to be negative 1 comma 3, all right? And that's then the point. So what you could do to kind of show that to yourself is you could go to your graph now and you could plot it. You could do x cubed, so x cubed, all right, plus 1, and then divide it now by x plus 1, and then hit graph. Now the graph isn't going to show you anything really special here, but if you go into your table, you'll notice, oh, look, when x is equal to negative 1, what does it tell you? Error, right? Error. 
There's an error. And now I know what we said over here. We said, well, Andrew, you said that when X is 1, uh, Y is going to be 3. How come there's an error there now? Well, the reason why there's an error there now is because um, when you plug it in, when you plug in negative 1, this still becomes discontinuous. Discontinuous? Discontinuous. Sorry, I hear my children screaming in the background. So uh, my mind is a little discontinuous at the moment. Um <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um, where was I? I don't really know where I was, so I'm just going to pick up somewhere. Error. Um, so the error exists at negative 1, okay? Um, I know we canceled it in the formula, okay? But that still doesn't, it, it basically is not a vertical asymptote, all right? It, we kind of reduce that discontinuity from a vertical asymptote now to a point discontinuity. So if you go and you look at the graph... If you have no idea what I'm talking about, neither do I. So, yeah. So if you were to go to the graph, okay, if you go to negative 1 and you go up 3, you'd be at this point. Now, if you look at that graph, you know, you can even zoom in. You can zoom in a little bit, right? And negative 1, and, and we don't even see it. And whatever. i got to go to Window. I have to change this now to the Y max. Is, let's call it 4. Hit Graph. So you can see one, and then I would go up to basically three right around here, okay? And if you look at that graph, it looks continuous, okay? It looks that way, but it isn't, right? The table's kind of telling that to you. It's yelling at you when x is equal to negative one. It's saying error, all right? So uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that nobody likes doing removable discontinuities. I mean, that's really the, that's really the basic part, right? Oh, well, there goes the door off the handles now. Um... I'm sorry. I'm really distracted during this video. If you didn't get any value out of this one, I don't blame you. I don't think I did either. So I apologize. But listen, we got over 5,000 other videos out there. And I promise you they're not all like this. Okay? Hopefully I helped you a little bit. But if not, listen, I love you anyway. Check us out because we got a ton more stuff for you. Take care.